Presented by Credit Karma. So last night, the Spurs took on the Rockets. DeJounte Murray scored a career-high 33 points, and San Antonio held on for a 123-120 win to inch closer to the final play-in spot in the Western Conference. So it was the fourth straight victory for the Spurs, who moved within one half game of Los Angeles, the Lakers, for the 10th spot in the West. And we know Big Perk, he likes San Antonio's chances. So let's take a look at the standings here. Here's the race for the play-in out west with, west with the Spurs just half a game behind the Lakers for that 10th and final spot. And the Lakers, they have the second toughest remaining schedule in the NBA. So with the play-in hanging in the balance for the Lakers, let's bring in our reporter Dave McMenamin, who is in Dallas today. So LeBron is currently listed as doubtful, Dave, against the Mavs tonight after suffering a left ankle sprain in L.A.'s loss to New Orleans on Sunday. So what is the current outlook for LeBron here, Dave? Malika, not very good. Things are not trending in a direction that would see him in the lineup tonight mm. in Dallas. He was experiencing significant swelling on Monday, did not participate in the team practice, stayed back at the hotel to undergo treatment. He's continued that treatment today, and they're leaving the door open technically where if there is some sort of, uh, you know, miraculous recovery over the next several hours, you could see him in there. But the team was preparing today as if they were not going to have LeBron James in the lineup. Okay, so potentially, though, a little bit of a silver lining here. Anthony Davis participated in live practice yesterday for the first time since suffering a right midfoot sprain on February 16th. So what's the timeline for Davis's return to the court? Yeah, Malika, the silver lining is that a source told me that he looked great in Monday's practice, which is a really good sign for this team, considering they haven't had him in the lineup since February 16th when he came down on Rudy Gobert's foot. The problem is that Frank Vogel explained to us reporters yesterday that they can't put too much on Anthony Davis's plate too soon and risk re-injuring him. So, again, he is listed officially as doubtful. Uh, also, uh, I've heard that the team is preparing not to have him as well tonight. And so this is going to be a skeleton crew in Dallas tonight, led by Russell Westbrook, hoping to stay alive in this play-in race and buy some time before they can get those two big guys back in the lineup. I got to tell you, though, the worry seems to be sinking in because if you talk to fans here in L.A., that the panic meter, it seems to be creeping up. It's quite high for the Lakers. What's the panic level within the team, Dave? Yeah, Malik, I would term it uh, urgency within the team. LeBron James spoke to us after the game in New Orleans, and he was asked, do you think this group recognizes what's at stake here? And he said, I think I understand. I think guys like Anthony Davis, Carmelo Anthony, guys who've been through it before, certainly understand the stakes right now. But the younger guys, many of them who've never even played in the playoffs, uh, can't really understand that at that point. A guy like Austin Reeves, uh, you know, he is a rookie. You know, he hasn't had this type of opportunity or the uh, pressure that comes with it. I think for the front office, it's acceptance. Mm -hmm. They didn't make any major moves at the trade deadline. They did not remove Frank Vogel from his post. And so they were prepared to move forward with whatever this season plays out. Uh, but panic is certainly uh, the tenor of Laker fans as they see this season that held so much promise in the offseason continue to fall apart. Sure. When you looked at the star studded roster, we talked about this the other day on the show, Player, which is a testament to Nikola Jokic. Oh, Anything is possible for how he, he is plays. not just in the conversation. Jokic, the reigning MVP. He claimed 62 of the 100 first place votes in the third and final iteration of ESPN's MVP straw poll, jumping way ahead, I think it's fair to say, of Joel Embiid with 29 first place votes and then Giannis Attentacumpo with nine votes. And just a reminder, in this straw poll, our ESPN reporter Tim Bontemps, he simulates the MVP voting. So he asks 100 media members for their top five MVP candidate. So in addition to that straw poll, Caesar Sportsbook has just adjusted the NBA MVP odds to make Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid co-favorites. So it had been Embiid, remember. Mm. Given all of this, and I, I would be remiss not to say that adjustment was made after this straw poll came out. So I want to do a little straw poll NBA Today style and make the case for the other guys. We talk a lot about Jokic. We talk a lot about Joel Embiid. So if they finish strong, and just so viewers know, the group test, it text, it was popping off with who's going to make the case for whom. But Perk, I want to start with you and an upset. You wanted to make the case for Giannis. Go ahead. 
I do. I do. Because I feel like we're getting bored with Giannis and his dominance, right? This is a guy that's averaging 29, 11, and 6, almost 7 assists. And when we look at Giannis, yes, he has Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton, which makes it even more impressive because he's able to go get those numbers when he have, when he still have two all-star caliber players playing alongside of him. And I think we're taking him for granted like we did LeBron James when he was making those runs in the Eastern Conference and he could have won multiple MVPs. It's the same case for Giannis. The Bucks are still at the, uh, one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference and they have been flying under the radar and Giannis has gotten better. All right, so I said this was an upset, and that's because you didn't choose Ja Morant. Chanae Agumake did. So what is Ja's case to mm -hmm. win MVP, Chanae? If we're talking about players that have gotten better, I feel like Ja Morant has to be at the top of the list, especially since we said, oh, he's too good to graduate from most improved, Mr. Perk. We've got to put him in most valuable player conversation. <laughs> this guy, you remember, I got the receipts. 27 and 8 so far this season, about 7 or 8 points more improved from seasons past. And just look at the Grizzlies. What are they, 53? and 23 on the season, the second best record in the NBA. Sometimes you get a shooting star, right? So many stars are out there, but you get a shooting star in an astronomical type of season for the Grizz where we did not see that happening or we did not expect that as much. That's what Jaw has done. He's galvanized this group. He's had a dominant season, and I feel like he could steal some MVP votes All very right. easily. Well, listen up, Suns fans, because JJ is about to make the case for Mr. Devin Booker to be I like MVP. This. Go ahead, JJ. Mm. The easy answer here is he's the leading scorer on the best team, but it's really, really much deeper than that. He's the 10th player to average at least 25, 5, and 5 on a team with a winning percentage of 800 or better. Eight of those previous nine players have won MVP. We talk all the time about his clutch time performance. The Suns are 24 and 5 in clutch games that he plays. He's shooting 57% from the field and 41% from three in clutch time. And perhaps most importantly, everybody thought the Suns were going to fall off when CP got hurt. He went for 28, 5, and 7 and led the Suns to an 8 and 3 record. Perk makes fun of me all the time because I'm an analytics guy, but I'm also an eye test guy, and my eyes are telling me he's a deserving MVP. All right, Chanae, you're the queen of, all right, I'm going to give multiple players their flowers here. <laughs> I want to so do it for all players, but who you know. else you got? I've got Jason Tatum because a lot of times after All-Star break, we see people, Mr. the Celtics, we see people really solidify their cases for awards. And Jason Tatum, might he's been balling. I mean, 33 points per game, second in NBA, scoring this month of March. And also the Celtics have been surging. It's not easy to revive a franchise that had great expectations mid-season with a first-year coach. And he's really emerged as that quintessential leader for Boston. And so I love to see his development. I love to see, we see these numbers, but now now you're seeing him career highs in points and rebounds and assists. He deserves to be in the conversation as well. All right. So we've hit on Jason Tatum. We've hit on John Moran. We've hit on Devin Booker. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Giannis, Jokic, Joel Embiid. But what about Luka Doncic? And for me, this is the three-prong reason as to why he should be in the MVP conversation. Number one, he does it all. Luka is the only player in the league right now to average 25, 8, and 8. Number two, he carries this team. And this is what we talk about with Nikola Jokic. This is what we talk about with Joel Embiid when he didn't have Ben Simmons. He is second in the NBA in usage rate. That's behind only Joel Embiid. And reason number three, he impacts winning. When he is on the court, the Mavs win 66% of their games. If you take him off of the floor, it is just not the same team. So because he's able to put this team on his back, I know that the Mavericks, they still have something to prove in the postseason. This is a regular season award, and Luka Doncic is absolutely deserving of being in that conversation. What do you think, Chanae? Oh, I agree. I just love him. I feel like we Oprah today. You get an MVP. You get an MVP. You get an MVP. <laughs> I think there are a number of deserving candidates it's going to be really interesting to see how those votes oscillate, you know, down the stretch. Go ahead, Perk. You, you, you know what I find? You know what I find crazy is that when we look at the MVP conversation right now and we look at all the MVP candidates and the guys that's supposed to be in the conversation that we consider to be in the conversation, guess what? They're international players. And mm. I remember this summer, I said something about international players are taking over the game of basketball. And one of the uh, 
form, current players in Draymond Green has something to say to me. But when you look at the guys who have won the MVPs over the last three years, they've been international players. Giannis, Giannis, Jokic. When you look at guys that have won the Defensive Player of the Year award, it has been Giannis and Rudy Gobert. So, to me, when I look at this and we think about Jokic, we think about Embiid, we think about Giannis, we think about Luka, those are four of the top seven guys in the NBA that are international players that we actually could make a case for winning the MVP. So when I talk about things like this and I say things like that at the moment, people think that I'm crazy. But no, it's really right here in front of your face that the international players are actually taking over the game of basketball. Well, speaking of international, we're going to go international on NBA Today because still to come, Spicy P himself, Mr. Pascal.